Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here, and welcome to a brand new series called The Hit Song Formula, featuring the mighty Van Halen. I was having lunch with my friend Tom Prather, uh, who was about to interview Greg Renoff uh, on his podcast about Van Halen, and he asked me a question. He said, what would you ask Eddie if you got to meet him? And I immediately thought of this clip. Some of the stuff Ed listens to, I can't stand. Oh, yeah? Like know? what? Tell me. Well, it gets too technical. Ed likes to listen to uh, Alan Holdsworth and, and the, the real guitarist, guitarist type guys, you know, really don't have a clue about what, how to put a song together, but what they play is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alan. I'm sorry. See, because that's the thing about Eddie Van Halen, is that he wrote l most of the music for the band, and he was this virtuosic player. And... That's what makes him different from so many others, is that he understood that the virtuosity needed a vehicle, and that was the song. That he would have his spots in the song to be on display, but that you needed the song to get out there. It is such a crucial piece that so few of us, myself included, focus on. And so the quest for this video is to find that vehicle, the Van Halen hit song formula. So what I did is I analyzed their top 10 billboard charts. Because you guys know, I'm obsessed with what makes a hit a hit. What makes non-musicians get songs stuck in their head and they're singing in the stadium? What is it? that makes it work for non-musicians. That's the key. So I took the Billboard Top 100 chart, and here we go. Their biggest hits in order. Jump, Why Can't This Be Love, When It's Love, Finish What You Started, Running With The Devil, I'll Wait, Panama, Love Walks In, Dance The Night Away, and Dreams. So I analyzed all of those for their key, for their tempo, for the actual song structure, verse, chorus, whatever. What happens during the lead section? And on and on and on. And I found that there are absolutely, without a doubt, common threads. It's not even common threads. They are exactly following this formula. And here it is in a nutshell. The full PDF accompanying this lesson, along with Tom Prather's list of the songs that have the intro as the chorus, the intro as the solo breakdown, and intro as the verse, along with my handwritten song notes. Those will be available for guitargate.com subscribers. It is the first link in the description. I'm so excited to share this with you because I know there's things in here that a lot of you haven't put together. And they're so simple. They're so simple and usable. One, here's the obvious one. The riff is king. The intro riff, every song starts with an intro, and sometimes it takes a little bit to get to it, but the riff is basically always the chorus. Think about it. It's basically always the chorus, right? Right? It, it's... It's, it's, every single one, every single one, right? Uh. Whether it's guitar or whether it's keyboard, the riff is the chorus and it's, wait for it, Major. Major. So, sometimes it's the verse as well, but it's almost always the chorus, whether it's guitar or whether it's piano. It is in every simple song. It's powerful, it's epic, and it's simple. And here's the big one. Here's the big one. It is always, 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 for these hit songs, based around basic triads and sus chords. Everything is a major triad, minor triad, 
or a sus2 or sus4 chord where the third is removed. That's it. That's it. Look at, look at jump. It's in C major. G. Five chord, one chord C. Four chord F. Do it again. And then it just goes down. F, F, different inversion. Fifth in the bass, C. C sus2. It is in every single song. So like if we go out to, um, um, let's say, uh, um, like Running With The Devil. This is one of the first ones that took everybody off guard, right? You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Usually when I play a major third with distortion, it just goes, it just sounds like crap. And it does. And that's why he used to flat the third to get a beatless third. That's why he did the, out of tune tuning to do that. It's because he was always thinking triads. D major, E major, A major triad, slide up, sorry, G major triad, slide up to A major, pull off to E major triad. It is literally in everything. Triads and sus chords to the moon. All right, so that's step one. Now, let's talk about keys. Every single guitar track on this list, Running With The Devil, Dance The Night Away, Panama, and Finish What You Started. By the way, I forgot to say, I swapped out Running With The Devil um, for Oh Pretty Woman because I didn't write it. Anyway, they are all in E. They're all in E. They're all major for the chorus. Yeah, get what you get, okay? All the keys songs, the two top ones, Jump, Why Can't This Be Love, Love Walks In, Dreams, all in C major. Only two outliers are I'll Wait and When It's Love, which are in D minor. But the choruses are D major in both. So what does this tell us? This tells us that Eddie plays the piano and the guitar in the same way. It is visually oriented, and he makes it work visually with his ear for the rhythm. It is white keys, and it is open strings. It is visual. It is physical, and you can see it when he plays. I knew... I identified with this as soon as I saw him play it the first time. I knew he felt about it the way I feel about it. My ear has always been my weak point. I'm not saying Eddie's ear is weak, that, that, that's preposterous, but I knew it was physical for me. I knew it was shape-based. Even intros like um, Hot for Teacher, right? When you think it's this... Clearly... That is just a shape, right? And the theory behind it, straight triads, dude. This is C, E, and A, right? A minor, D major, D minor, G major, G minor, C major. There's no outliers in his game for the most part. And then when he goes to the, when it goes across, that's just a straight pattern. So the key takeaway here is that he likes the white keys. Almost everything is built on the white keys, these hits, with major triads and minor triads and sus chords on the white keys of the piano and open strings, key of E on guitar. Take it to the bank. That's step one. Check it off the list. Number two, what makes this all possible, the triad work and the sus chords, is a rock solid steady rhythm section with driving either quarter, eighth, or sixteenth note bass runs played by either Michael Anthony or doing the, the, the synth bass. It is in every single song. And unlike Eddie, who's doing a lot of inversions up top, Michael Anthony or Eddie playing synth bass is almost always doing either a pedal tone, so just again, think, you know. It's just, 
There's nothing changing. It's just the E going through there. And it's in every song. So it's either the pedal tone or the root of the chord that's changing. It's almost never a walking bass line. There's almost never an inversion. The point of this is twofold. One, it doesn't ask much of the listener. The non-musician can get the hook stuck in their head and stay dancing and isn't thrown anything that's going to be like, mm, right? It's, it allows Eddie to do all the versions and to play major stuff in a distorted, you know, you know, hot environment because it holds it down solid, right? Harmonically. The rhythm piece is even my more favorite part because I'm so happy that when my friend Rick Beato did uh, his What Makes His Song Great on Running With The Devil, he pointed out how difficult it is to play perfect, succinct, round bass notes of the exact same duration. Because here's the thing for everyone out there. Now take this to the bank. I want you to listen to me here. A rhythm section requires the bass and drums to understand the duration that each impact should live on to, right? How long it should go. The drums can create the impact, but they can't hold the note and put vibrato on it and squeeze it out at the exact same time. So a great rhythm section is about the bass extending the initial impact of the drums, most notably the kick drum, for a specific duration and a specific tone and then cutting it off at the exact point. That's what groove is. That's what it is. And Van Halen does it perfectly. And it's almost always straight and in 4-4, which allows Eddie and Dave with his voice and Sammy to swing over top of it and to let that be the focus and the things people remember. That's it. That's the deal. So, next up is you have a major chorus always combined, unless, unless, unless it's just one riff all the way through, like Ain't Talking About Love, with a minor verse or pre-chorus. There is always a coupling of, the, of a major chorus preceded by something minor in the verse or pre-chorus. And here's the thing. It is always in key. It is almost exclusively the relative minor, so the sixth chord, or the two chord. And when it's the two chord, since almost every song is in C, it is almost always D minor. You see, you're starting to see these recurring themes in here? So, for example, for example, jump, the intro, uh, you know, is the verse and the chorus, but the pre-chorus goes to its relative minor, right? In Why Can't This Be Love, you get a one, six, four, five, you know, the intro with the 16th note bass, but the verse goes to its relative minor. Starts with D minor, though, starts with that two chord in the key of C, but you always get this Verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus. That's jump. Why can't this be love? Verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus. And it's almost always two choruses in Running With The Devil. Now, in Running With The Devil, you get this E minor vibe in the verse. So you got this, oh, uh, sorry. That's E major, but then you get this That is E minor, because you have a G, not G sharp in there. You got G, not G sharp. So it's always a minor verse or pre-chorus that resolves to a major chorus. And they're always coupled. Eddie always set up his choruses with a minor chorus or pre-chorus before it. There wasn't always a pre-chorus. But like, listen, I mean, listen to it. When it's, when it's love, you have that intro, that's D major. Um, I think it's, it's, uh, 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 
and, and the chords are like a D major, five, A major, D over F sharp, so that's just one again, first inversion, four, G major, but then it does this, right? It got the, that's it, over F, but there shouldn't be an F, it should be F sharp in key, right? Because that's the major third of D. So immediately we're setting up this minor thing. And then it goes to C, same thing again, and then back to D, and then the main riff. That is D minor. Even though it never hits this F, in the bass, you will hear it go to the F and spell out those chord changes. This sus chord over top, which you saw me do like this, is like, again, it allows Eddie to do those sus chords when the bass is staying straight ahead on it. It's in everything. In Dance the Night Away, the pre-chorus is your uh, relative minor, six minor chord, but again, the chorus is major. Um, it's literally in everything. In I'll Wait, the verse is D minor. Sorry. It is D minor, right, right? But then for the chorus, that is D major sus four, or D, D sus four, D major. What is that bad boy? F sharp. And then immediately, with an F to a G, so your F sharp went to F. So we always, always, in dreams, verse, relative, minor, and then the chorus, C major. It's, it's literally in, in, in every song. So, you got the riff is king. It is the chorus. It's sometimes the verse too. You start with it, you end with it, it's always verse chorus or verse pre-chorus chorus, and it's always it's almost always two of each. That's it. Steady eighth uh, quarter or sixteenth note pedal tones or or just straight ahead rock bass staying on the on the roots. Again, you have a major chorus in a minor verse or pre-chorus always, especially on keyboard tunes. It generally is the uh, is the uh, relative minor, the sixth chord, or the two chord. In which case it's almost always D, because the key songs are almost, they are pretty much all in C, except the ones that are actually in D. And now comes what I call the X factor. And this is the whole point. I'm actually going to restart the camera to make sure I don't lose this. Here's the X factor. This is, this is the point of all of it. This is the crafted interlude or solo section that is in every single song. Now, for the songs that he is not soloing over the actual chorus, right? The actual main riff, like you get in the earlier guitar-centric songs, there is a theme which I have discovered, which I have not heard anybody else talk about, that I am blown away by and it just, makes me so happy. And that is, he looks at the keyboard the same way he looks at the guitar. And a lot of these interludes, solo sections, if you will, are based around the shape of the keyboard, the white keys and the black keys. And it's an actual pattern where he deviates from playing triad-based things the whole rest of the tune to an actual riff-based pattern. And that is what he solos over. And that is why it sounds like such an incredible departure from the rest of the tune. And when it comes back, it's so masterful. You're like, how do you ever come up with that? It's the black keys. It's the shape of those five notes. And he's making little riffs. Don't believe me? We're going with the big dog. Jump. And before you say, oh, it's not in other tunes. Yeah, it is. That's your homework to go check it out. I'll sh 
I'll show you two examples. It's in jump or why can't this be love? But I'm gonna show you jump. And it's the same thing. They're both key of C. And then when it goes to this, this, this thing, it switches to a B flat minor-ish focus, right? But that's not the whole story. Here's the whole story. Let me go up to the solo. So you say to yourself, how does anyone ever come up with that? The song's in the key of C. It's just major triads and sus chords. And out of nowhere, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Especially for the first keyboard track that really popped and the biggest song ever. Here's what it is. Listen to these bass lines. Is that it? Oh, see, look, I'm getting turned around in here. Yeah, so what this is here is you got. That's it repeating. Now let me hold up, let me hold up the keyboard here. So again, whole time we've been in the key of C, all white keys. Now check this out. You got. You see the pattern and then let me see if you can hear this underneath it, right? It goes something like this. Listen for it. You hear that? You hear that, that extra layer in there? Now what that is, what that is, is you got uh, 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 uh. Do you see the pattern? Let me make sure I have those notes right, because I learned it on, I learned it on guitar. So yeah. Yeah, that's it, that's it. So that's all you're getting. That's all for that part too, right? It's just, that. that's it. So the way he came up with this radical departure is he went from the white keys to the black keys. That's it. Don't believe me? All right, okay, before, I'm gonna do a deep dive and show you the rest of why this solo was awesome because there's something really, you know what, I'm just gonna show you because because it needs to happen. It's gonna be all manic because I love this stuff. Check this out. Back to the white keys, right? Try it. Bass notes moving around, right? Staying key, nothing crazy. Right? Now here. So what is this? What is this? Again, this is G, C, D, and G doing a sextuplet, a six note triad or a triplet feel, if you will. So one, two, three, four, five, six for each beat. And the bass note is descending from B flat, sorry, <laughs> B flat, A, A flat to G. So what is this? This is a blues turnaround. Turnarounds end up on the five. You either come up from the uh, major third, step by step, or you go down from the flat seven, right? But that's it. So you're hearing, you're hearing that top sus two structure, G sus two, be the thing that remains constant. And then the bass line descends 
like a blues turnaround, showing his blues background, and that five resolves to one, back to C, back to the masterful stuff, masterful stuff, because this, this thing that descends, it, we'll save that for another video. So anyway, you think that's, you think that's the only one that, that it happens in? Check this out. Let's do Why Can't This Be Love? What is that? What is that? A song in the key of C? It had that build up that all white keys. And then you get this out of nowhere. What is that? This is, of course, A flat and B flat. Um, where am I? Where am I? Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Yeah. That's how he did it. It was that simple. Dude is playing on the white keys, switching to the black keys for the interlude. And what does it do? It takes you away for the first time from that triad approach and you switch to a riff. You switch to a riff and what does he solo over that? Gives you that B flat kind of thing over it, right? Gives you that sort of modal sound. He just throws the shape. That's it. And then how do we end? How do we end here? Oh, look, see, look, I got all my papers. All these will be on my uh, website for everybody on GuitarGate who uh, makes this whole channel possible. How do we end? Again, it's always intro, verse, pre chorus that has a minor event into the chorus, which is major, with harmonies. This is the little X factor at the end. Always two choruses in the cycle for the most part with three-part harmonies on top with Michael Anthony all the way up to sing you out on the way home. Does the solo interlude, usually does the intro again, sometimes another verse, pre-chorus, chorus, but in almost every case of every song I can find, Van Halen ends every song with their chorus with full harmonies. That's how you get the non-musicians hooked. You hear it, you establish the tune, you do that minor major thing with the uh, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, so that it keeps resolving back to that hook that they first got with in the earworm. You do that two times. You do an interlude, which is like, what's going on out here? Come back to it and hit them with it again till it ends. Dance the night away. Chorus, six times with harmonies faded out. Unchained, chorus to the end. Right now, chorus with the end. And the cradle will rock, chorus with the end. I'll wait. Verse, chorus, four times fade out to the end. Love walks in, guitar solo, four times with the, uh, the hook at the end. Panama, chorus at the end. Dreams is the wild card, but jump, and why can't this be love? Literally, they're the same song. Intro, 30 seconds long, one, four, five, you know, with a six, or with a synth bass. You got verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, solo with the key change, solo with the outro, intro key riff, chorus fade out. Uh, dreams is the only other wild card because with Love Walks In and Dreams, um, 
uh, or at least just with dreams, there's actually a bridge. The thing that you sing that what dreams are made of, that's actually the bridge. But he does start and end the song with it. Um, I know they call it the bridge because that's how the sheet music. I always check with sheet music. Um, and that's it. So what are the key takeaways? This was a crazy video. One, the riff is king. It's always a 30 second intro for the most part. The riff is almost always the chorus. The chorus is always major. And the song is usually in E major, or for the, um, uh, in the key of E for guitar centric stuff and key of C for piano centric stuff. The only exception is when it's in the key of D. And in every case, you have a minor, a D minor to a D major to get back to that chorus. And all the songs where the song does not have a separate pre-chorus, there's sometimes the verse is the same as the chorus, but there's a minor element that gets resolved to the major chorus. It almost always goes verse, chorus two times, verse, chorus two times, almost always with harmonies two times on each of the chorus straight into the solo interlude section. When it is not, when he's not soloing over the main riff of the chorus, usually, especially in keyboard tunes when he started doing this, he switches to a groove, not the, not the stereotypical um, uh, uh, like triad based, um, you know, whatever, um, switches to the black keys. Like it's just a straight groove and a straight beat which he solos over. And that's why it has this outer space flavor. When it comes back to it, you hit him with the intro, maybe a verse, pre-chorus, chorus, but always ends with the chorus and the harmonies again. That's it. It's every tune. It's every tune. And it just goes to show you. Shapes, rhythm, following your ear will get you there. Make something. This is his unique formula. I can't wait to do more. Please. Drop links in the comments. Tell me the ones I should do next. I love you. I appreciate you. And if you'd like to support this channel, if you can tell this is a little bit different, I would invite you to click the first link in the description and join me and so many others over at Guitargate. It's my life's work. I built a curriculum around a community that will help you keep picking this thing up every day instead of walking by it so we each just get a little bit better. That's it. Cheers. The Mighty Van Halen. Yes.